Welcome back to HowToAV.TV. We're on the HD based T stand at IRT 2023, and I'm joined by Daniel Schwartzberg. The last time we spoke was seven years ago. I think so, Chris. It was a long time ago. Well, I believe that there's been some updates to HD based T <laughs> since then. The last time we talked, we were talking about HD based T 2.0. Now it's time for all of the latest on 3.0 version. Perfect. Daniel, before we go into what's changed, let's have a quick brief about what HD Base T is, what it does for the AV industry. Absolutely, so let's, that's a great starting point. Let's start with that. So HD Base T finally brought to the industry quite a few years ago, a solution for elegant long reach extension of all of the different data types that are needed in installations. So if we think about before HD Base T, you had a cable for HDMI and you had a cable for ethernet and you had a cable for this and a cable for that. They were limited in size, uh, in length. Uh, most of them couldn't be field terminated either. So, so an installer had a heck of a job trying to get the equipment placed where he wanted it with the, within the limitations that the cabling had. And HDBase-T came along and said, okay, we can do this much better. What we can do is take all of those different protocols and we're gonna converge them into a new protocol called HDBase-T. It's gonna run over a very long reach single cable. So it's one category cable that can run up to 100 meters long. It can be terminated in the field. And on that cable, we're gonna do five things. We call it five play. We're gonna do the AV, the audio video. Uh, and as, as we'll find out in a moment when we talk about spec three right now, we're doing uncompressed 4K 6444. So we've got the AV on that cable. Uh, we've got ethernet and it depends upon which version of the spec, but it's either 100 meg or one gigabit of ethernet being tunneled on the same cable. We can now do also USB 2.0. We can do all of the controls that are needed in the system, whether it's RS-232 UART, whether it's I squared C, whether it's the thing that the HDMI interface needs like CC, like the EDID and the HDCP. Um, we can also do as the fifth element power as well, up to 100 watts of DC power all on the same cable. So suddenly the installer goes away from struggling with multiple short length cables to having one cable, five play elements on it, and it's able to do everything they need. And it really has since it came out has really revolutionized the AV industry and the way work is done. I cannot stress enough for those who are, who, who are new to HD Base T that this is over a single cable, Absolutely. all of those signals, and it's using standard Ethernet Category 6 cable. It's, it, you know, in fact, to begin with, in fact, the minimum requirement of HD Base T was just a simple Cat 5E, which was even unshielded. And then as, as the spec versions have increased, so you want to put slightly better cabling in to get more margins. But as you say, it's a single cable. It can run up to 100 meters long, off-the-shelf category cable, cut it to exactly the distance you need, terminate it in the field, crimp on the connectors, no wastage of cables, makes for a very, very neat, easy to perform installation. And you talk about long reach, and I know we'll talk about distances in a while, but it's really important, again, if, if you think that the key benefit is that you're using existing uh, network cable infrastructure, then if you start talking about the distances, it's a whole other story again. So if we compare distance maybe of HDMI, to what you can do with HD base T, how would those two compare? Excellent question. So HDMI, an HDMI cable, you're normally going to get up to around about 10, maybe 12 meters. And when you get to those sort of lengths, you're going to pay top dollar for it, right? These are not cheap cables. As I've said, we can take that and we can drive that up to 100 meters. In some cases, actually, we can go to 150 meters if you're willing to compromise a little bit on the bandwidth. So you've got a ton more cable reach available to you. But don't forget, it's not just the distance, it's the fact that on that one cable, we have everything else. The audio, the video, the USB, the ethernet, the controls, and the power. And if we think about USB, USB 2.0 is actually limited by spec to a five meter cable. So even if, even if I can put an HDMI cable in that does 10 meters, I'm limited now by the USB, okay? With HD Base T, those limitations simply fade away. 100 meters, no matter what the protocol is that's running on the cable. So we last spoke about it seven years ago. Mm. I was sold back then. It's an incredible <laughs> technology. Really has revolutionized the way that AV systems are installed. Now we're seven years on. We're now out with version 3.0. What is the difference? What are we now getting that we can add into a system? Well, it's all about bandwidth. And just to remind everybody what Spec 2 was capable of doing, in the downlink, it was an eight gigabit per second link. And in the uplink, it was 300 megabits per second. What that meant was that I could run in, the, in for the video uncompressed 4K 3444 or 4K 6420. Uh, in the uplink, we, we call that our return channel. Uh, that's where we cover all, cover uh, carry all the non-video data. So that was uh, allows to do 100 meg of Ethernet uh, plus USB 2.0, but with some limitations on the bandwidth that's available. Fast forward those seven years to where we are today, spec 3.0. 
We've doubled the downlink. So we've got 16 gigabits per second in the downlink. And I'm not gonna do the maths in my head, but I think it's almost seven times more uplink. So from a 300 meg backlink, we've now got two gig uplink. So spec three, 16 gig in the downlink, two gig in the uplink. What does that mean practically speaking? That means that I can now run uncompressed 4K6444. We are the only solution on the market that runs completely uncompressed HDMI 2.0 formats, okay? That's revolutionary. But because now I have more bandwidth in my uplink as well, now I can increase the bandwidth for other interfaces. So my ethernet now jumps from 100 meg to one gig. So I'm now tunneling gigabit ethernet at the same time as I'm running uncompressed HDMI 2.0. I have more bandwidth also from my USB 2.0 interface. So it's all about getting more data through the link and HDBase-T3 has the ability to do that. Uh, we have some neat also uh, onboard chip-to-chip uh, -chip interfaces that allow us to do things like daisy chaining, allows to create more advanced topologies. HDBase-T has always been uh, a networking topology. And when I mean networking, I mean going beyond just simple point-to-point -point links. So we, we're going away from the idea of having a transmitter here, a receiver there, and that's all we've got now. now we can create very uh, neat topologies like two by two switches without the need for HDMI crossbars, without the need for really anything else on the board. There's a lot of new use cases and it's, and it's use cases that are not necessarily traditional HD based team markets. I mean, here we are at ISC, we walk around the show floor, we see switch matrices, we see extenders and we see projectors and displays and they all have HD based T in them. But what we're seeing now are brand new segments emerging, new markets, um, things like industrial, things like medical, uh, transportation. And these are markets that maybe people don't traditionally think as being right for HD based team, but on the contrary, it's one technology that serves an entire range of use cases that quite literally are limited by the imagination. So a lot, a lot, a lot of bandwidth, a lot new, uh, of new applications are available. And you say we can't name names. Of course, there are many, many manufacturers who use HD based T technology. If we talk about all of those, certainly within ISC right now, we're seeing all of the lead players within AV. Is there compatibility between brand to brand of, of devices? Absolutely. So first of all, yeah, HD based T is a technology that's backed by an alliance of some 200 members, as I said earlier. What that alliance al allows us to do is to implement what we call our compliance testing specification. So in other words, what we do is at a, as an alliance, we will test customer products to ensure they meet the, the demands of the spec, okay? And what that guarantees is interoperability, okay? So in other words, I can now go and buy a, a, a switch matrix from company A and a projector from company Y, and I will know that they will interoperate uh, at the best level that both support. So if I'm mixing between vendors, I have interoperability. We also have backward compatibility and interoperability between different versions of the spec. So if I have a spec three product connected to a spec two product, it will work. Of course, it will work at the level that spec two enables. So I don't expect to have a 16 gig link when I have a spec two product on it, but you won't get a blank screen. You won't have to call the installer back to say my system's not working. It's fully interoperable. And that's the beauty of having such a large alliance. It is the largest AV industry alliance uh, around um, and it continues to grow. Uh, and as you say on the screen, we see some of them. At the show, I, we have a card. I didn't count them all, but I think there's more than a hundred member companies here at the show displaying HD based T products. Um, HD based T spec three is, is enjoying an enormous adoption rate. Um, we have a, a, our HD based T Powerwall here. We have around about 40 products from 25 customers just here in the booth. Uh, but in fact, there are more than 100 HD based T spec three products that we know of currently in the marketplace. Uh, and we hear our customers telling us that they are transitioning to more and more HD based T spec three product. So we see interoperability, we see a growing ecosystem of companies, we see a growing ecosystem of products, and everything fully compatible, fully interoperable. It's, a, it's really a winning proposition. Technology continues to move forward from HD base T, making systems easier to install, faster to install, cheaper to install Absolutely. now, of course, as well. And the technology will not slow down. We're seeing adoption of 3.0 throughout the industry. We're going to see more and more products. Do not forget, if you're using 2.0 products at the moment, you still have that interoperability. So do not worry about new, new 3.0 and 2.0 working together. You are going to get that. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us once again. We're not going to wait seven years until we catch <laughs> up. We'll see you again next year if I don't see you before. Absolutely, Chris. So all, join us again soon at howtoav.tv.